So the last time we touched base, I promised I would start working on some style-oriented stuff, and I kind of have been. I've been picking up parts where I can, and uh, grabbing some things that we'll talk about later. But in that time, I came across an opportunity I couldn't really pass up. Yeah, it's another SR20. Previously on Project Reverse Entry. The idea behind the project is doing the opposite of most S13s. I purchased a track beaten, worn down S13 with an SR20 swap, and I'm bringing it back to the perfect streetcar. So because this is a used engine and we're going for longevity here, this is the reliability chapter of the Reverse Entry project, we're gonna wanna freshen things up. So what we've done is we've sent the valve cover and intake manifold away for powder coating. And my friends at Brightside Coating have definitely delivered. So everything is gonna look a little better and we're adding some style points as promised. So once you take the valve cover off an engine, you're gonna to wanna to clean up the head and replace the gasket before you put it back on. And since mine has been off for a while, I'm just gonna clean up the top, make sure everything looks prim and proper, and then we'll get this thing back on. <laughs> when you're replacing the top parts of the engine, it's a good idea while you're down here to replace a lot of the less reliable components of the OEM stuff. So things like the original vacuum lines and maybe some of these plugs if they're broken, luckily mine are in great shape. It's a good idea to replace with something a little more heavy duty. That's going to stand the test of time. Also replace your clamps. I'm not going to be using the same rusted out clamps that it came with, but uh, I'm going to make sure this is a little more secured than it looks right now. So, with some new vacuum lines, and just like that, it looks a little fresher. So with all my clamps, hoses, and the essentials freshened up, and some freshly powder coated bits on top of the engine, we're looking good, and hopefully performing good as well. I've got a couple more things to bolt up, freshen up, and make sure everything's running properly, but through the use of movie magic, we're going to skip right to swap day. Okay, hang on, that didn't work properly. So. Everything on the engine is more or less taken care of. And the last thing we had to do before putting the transmission on was hook up this super sweet ACT setup. Thank you, Advanced Clutch Technology. Uh, they sent me both a lightweight flywheel, a clutch itself, and the pressure plate. You can see the unboxing on PassMag, but more importantly, you can see it here on the engine now. So with everything aligned and bolted up, this should stay put and we're good to go. With the clutch and transmission on, now it's actually time for the swap. Let's try this again. Nice. So, we're here at Grassroots Performance and it is swap day. In short, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in here. But if we're gonna do that, I get to take this out of here. So, I've never swapped an engine before. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I think what I have to do is disconnect all electronics drain all fluids, and disconnect the transmission from any of its apparatuses like the drive shaft because we have a new transmission going in. Frost, did I miss anything? Yeah, you missed about six hours worth of work. <laughs> Reverse entry, back in the shop, gonna make it happen. It's a tall order for an SR swap, but we came to the right <laughs> bar. See you there. So thanks to my friends at AEM Performance Electronics, we've got a fuel pressure regulator and a high flow intake fuel pump. So that's gonna help push fuel to the engine a little bit faster. Thanks AEM. So because we're focusing on reliability for this chapter, the S15SR is a big part of that. It's generally just a better SR than a red top or early generation black top. It's got better cooling, bigger turbo, forged internals, 
all sorts of good stuff that's going to make this last a lot longer, and I can be a little bit silly with it if I want to. Once we had the engine in, we connected electronics, added fluid, and got ready to run some tests. Unfortunately, we noticed right away that the fuel pump wasn't turning on. But knowing Mike from GT Custom Exhaust Oshawa was good with wiring, I figured I'd let him sort that out when I went there for intercooler piping. Mike spent an hour or two making some really sweet intercooler piping for the new setup, and everything was looking good. Unfortunately, when we went to trace the electronics issue, we realized that the chassis harness I had was so cut up and butchered and bypassed and all sorts of things that tracing the source of the issue was next to impossible. Alright, so... I've been at GT Custom Exhaust Oshawa for the past two days, as has this car right here. So my, my engine is in, thanks to Grassroots, and my fabrication is looking awesome, thanks to Mike here at GT. But uh, the old harness isn't great. In fact, a lot of things have been changed up. So uh, we're gonna rewire a lot of things. My next effort was to send the car off to TDT Racing to my buddy Travis and have him swap in a brand new chassis harness to make this work. So we're out here all of one week later actually, one week after this all started at Schmidt Automotive, home of TDT Tuning, AKA my buddy Travis. And uh, we've got my car more or less torn apart from the inside out. Let's take a tour over here. There isn't a whole lot left within the car. This is what it takes to remove an old shitty body harness and we're gonna replace it with a brand new one so deep within my dashboard which honestly I haven't had off myself since I've even owned the car is most of the new body harness uh, it may look like a jungle right now hey there's some of my audio stuff but it's gonna get cleaned up real nice and by the time we're done everything you see here and also here will be tucked super nicely and barely visible in the car. And since Travis is a wiring genius, we're gonna try and make this super clean and streamlined and avoid any problems down the road. Okay, today's the day. It is now two weeks after I brought my car in for what I foolishly thought was like a 48 hour engine swap. Let that be a lesson, it's not gonna happen as quick as you think. So I've just buttoned up my exhaust that's been off for a while here in the driveway. Travis has assured me we are good to go. And I've got faith in the teams I've been working with. So this should, in theory, time I've had the car running, I can confidently say this is the best the car has ever been, and I'm really happy with the reliability we've got so far. With winter coming pretty soon, I've got a couple things to do before this is finished, and I've got an appointment to make. <laughs>